Hi guys, I'll put my glasses back on. I'm uh, rather discombobulated, as maybe you can tell. I have coffee. I also have a piece. Not, it's not that big. It's not as big as my head. It is um, half as big as my hand, okay? And this is my hand. So this is the size of the cake. It's uh, very Dutch. We call this breakfast cake. It's um, like cake, not as sweet, and has spices in it, clove and cinnamon, that kind of thing. So the reason I'm out here at this point is because I'm in a state of confusion again. I um, did the dark child spread um, that I will probably be uploading more or less at the same time as this little video here if I uh, decide to finally do so because um, there will have to be a warning attached to that spread I think my glasses are fogging up that's disgusting anyway I have found that doing the spread in the extended way as I have as I will by this time have uh, you know shown it to you it had actually a profound effect I have never encountered cards but maybe it is because of the subject matter that uh, I just opened up a whole can of worms you know that's one way of putting it or um, Pandora's box again so coffee it's real nice rather than disturb husband at work because I overspent a bit not that much and all of the things that I bought are in the freezer so they will be eaten I was just I suppose I wasn't really my mind wasn't really on it that's what happened really and I went home and I stored my stuff and I have a lot of fruit as well. So I'm all, I've all bought, it's only good things and I'm not really too worried. And I didn't overspend like $100 or anything, which would be a problem. I, um, so I'm not too worried about that. And the thing is that I want to call my husband, which is probably why I did the overspending, because I want to call him. And I don't feel comfortable doing that at this point because I'm afraid that I will um, get all emotional and out of control. Why is that? Because I've discovered, and the moment I'm, my thoughts veer in that direction, I my hand with my coffee mug starts <laughs> going like that. So I'm putting the mug down and putting my glasses back on because hopefully I am cooling down a bit at this point in time. I've discovered basically that narcissism isn't only a matter of behavior to the outside 30, 40 years on in time. If you peel away the layers of the behavior, especially for yourself, which is what I've been doing over the past weeks, I find one thing basically which is that my mother and I never really differentiated from each other. It's a, apparently a, a, a very, a textbook, um, would you say, how do you pull that, put that? Um, a trait, uh, um, point of reference for narcissism is that there is no differentiation from the mother. And I suppose that it is really a threefold problem for me. My mother was quite strict. She was traumatized herself badly in several ways. And uh, I think in terms of temperament, I was, as she has said, has explicitly stated to me more than once, I was more or less the only good thing in her life. So, there you go. But differentiating has to do with becoming an individual. So I'm very shaky here because I have to reinvent myself, which is what I've been doing over the past eight years, you know, ever since all the things. 
and I don't know, I still don't know how to do it. All I can do is dig into the sensitivities all the time. And each time there's a new layer that is shocking and painful. And here I am, and all I have is my piece of cake and my coffee and you guys. <laughs> so I'm feeling quite sorry for myself here. Then again, I realized that this is very worthwhile to be doing and i am i am guessing i'm not the only person doing this and whoever is doing this with more assistance from therapists and whatever you know people present at that moment for them still has to go through the same huh what the hell you know why why am i in such pain why is my mother gone? Um, why does it have to be so difficult? Couldn't we just love each other? I mean, I'm just saying a couple of things here. That just whatever comes to mind, you know? And you have to... It's always hard. No matter whether you have loads of help. I can, you know, go back to my journal. I can do that in a bit. I will have a friend coming over for lunch. Whom I can sort of... Yeah, talk to certainly if I get my act together. If I get enough of a grip. Again, I am 54 years old. The grey hairs you see here. <laughs> I mean, I have been on this planet for quite a while now. And I suppose that it means I can regroup. I can by now. When I was 16 years old... I'm starting to shake again, you know, <laughs> with my mug here, because just thinking of that. One of the aspects that has to do, that I've been reading about, I've seen a whole lot of intel, which is, you know, vital and crucial and, and, and fantastic to have a look at. If you manage, you know, with, with yourself and your brain and, and all that. One of the things of having... Um, identity issues like this where you're not properly differentiated from your mother because my mother couldn't let me go basically she couldn't really give birth to me even because that lasted for a day and it was a very difficult um you know delivery at that time is what they've always told me and um one of the things that have to that have to do with that with uh not being not being differentiated enough at an early stage um, is that your emotions under the surface remain the emotions of the toddler which is very black and white very dr drawn to extremes want and don't want and <laughs> what we tend to call immature behavior you know <laughs> so i'm full of that stuff as i sit here i am just overflowing with all the misery and all the i'm a toddler <laughs> i swear to god with all the gray hairs and all the rest of it it's just um it's still all there it's still all there and i suppose that um boy i don't know one of the things that i have been doing that i will be coming back to that will be uh enabling me to you know have I don't know, whatever it is that I really want. What I really want. I suppose what I want is um, to calm down. To calm down from the heights of uh, bewilderment and um, distress, really. And pain and all that. I don't want to feel that way, but I have to for a while. Then again, what I can do and will do is I will return to my uh, my creative work. I will return to my writing and my oracle card drawing and stuff. And one of the things that I had uh, visualized as a new future uh, oracle card to be. This is my uh, one of the second series and I'm on to my third series now. It's a half finished picture of a of an Amanita mushroom that it won't be able to focus on properly. That's the kind of thing that I'm uh, most 
thinking of at this point. Um, I'd thought of uh, making a card that has like a pile of skulls, bigger ones and little ones, and two golden keys crossing over in front of the in front of this pile of skulls like that. So a bit of a skull and crossbones kind of a dealio, but with keys instead of crossbones. And because the the way you feel really is the key in the end. And you have to so yeah, so you imagery tends to help me, tends to it just mm, gives me slightly more of a sense of space for myself. Not having any boundaries, maybe, you know, uh, not having a real sense of personal space, everybody invading our space. How much of this is so utterly common, so underneath the layers of what we used to call civilization? How much of this is so normal that nobody talks about it? Or people do talk about it, but from an academic perspective mostly, which is kind of annoying. So here I am, you know, with my truckload of uh, <laughs> of issues. The cards have been very impactful. Doing a spread in this way where you do not avoid the darker sides and you just open up to whatever... Um, darker part of you is in there basically the tarot is you know that's what the cards are for so this morning this was my card the world's card so talk about being born and there's bones and ghosts and lizards and scorpions the bat is opposite the scorpion which is kind of freaky because Taurus is opposite Scorpio. Lots of moon stuff going on at the same time. Mercury retrograde at this moment as I'm filming this. Uh, the moon is heading towards the new moon position, but not there yet. It is uh, two days away, I think. Yeah, two days and a bit. And uh, at this location where I am. And the moon is um, conjuncting whatever it was, Neptune. Uh, no, opposite Neptune, and there's my uh, lunar apogee in Pisces at that point as well. And so the moon itself is across from that in uh, in Virgo, moving over to Libra in uh, probably tomorrow, early tomorrow, something like that. So I can see how this all, I mean, the moon goes past that point, that exact point, every month, right? So it's not like every month I am going disintegrating like this it is at this point and i think that's also a thought i want to put out there uh since i'm doing this anyway and you're here anyway you know <laughs> welcome to <laughs> to the weirdness is that it's a process and if you are i suppose i am kind of lucky also i count myself lucky anyway that i have been in this terrain all year long and before that, I was already working on these issues and on these things. And I've just been approaching the event horizon, which is what my husband calls this, you know, more and more. And uh, and it's scary and it's still, it's still scary. But I do get to know myself a whole lot better. And I suppose that eventually there will be things that I give up caring about, you know, because or n I don't. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't take the same shape that it used to do before all this work. So, but it's a process and it takes, you have to, you cannot just jump to chapter 17. You have to, uh, you know, do your little thing and then do the next thing. And there's a, there's an organic process going through those things. So that's pretty, I think that's rather neat, actually. Hmm. Coffee is nice. It's like drinking the coffee while it is hot also. Or within within spec. And you have to... A lot of living on the planet, which is a very, uh, you know, Queen of Pentacles kind of a mojo, I think, is seeing the process. Respecting 
one's process. So that's what I have to do also. I have to just stay aware where I am in this and not go into toddler mode where peoples please come and rescue me because that's the undifferentiated mode really come and rescue me so um i will have to do my own rescuing as always which i have done and i'm still doing i still kind of believe that it's possible you know because it's the extremity of the emotions that makes it hard to deal with but Aside from that, I am happy and healthy, which is weird, you know? So I wish for you to also be happy and healthy in spite of travails or maybe even through them and because of what you are doing, okay? Thank you so much for being here, you guys. I love you to death, okay? Thank you and see you next time. Ciao for now.